Hey guys, welcome to another geeky tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to turn this photo into this in only four steps. You can already can imagine that what software I'm going to use, obviously. Now, just remember that before I start into this tutorial that you don't have to have Affinity Photo with you. Same step, you can use it in GIMP, which is absolutely free. I'm all for all the free software because being artistic not supposed to be expensive no right let's jump into the tutorial and show you how to use topaz denoise ai in collaboration with canon dpp remember the last part affinity photo it's absolutely optional you don't have to use it now let me show you the original photo so this is the original photo you can clearly see that it is horrible. First of all, it's ISO 6400 and underexposed, taken with Canon 70D. All three are just wrong in every level because Canon 70D is technically one of the oldest camera right now. I mean, it's still a good camera, but when it comes to ISO, this is not the low light beast. And combination with the ISO 6400, it, the noise you can clearly see it's horrible. On top of that, it's underexposed. So I have to actually overexpose it to recover some details and do the noise reduction things cannot get better than that this is the recipe of disaster of in any kind of photography i'm telling you now this is the 100 zoomed in i mean usually typically you'd say that this is it i mean you probably end up using it in social media or blog in a small format for a smaller screen but for professional level photography you no way can sell it so i'm going to do recover this photo using Canon DPP in collaboration with Topaz Denoise AI. Step number one, you go to Digital Photo Professional 4. From the top, you gotta have to do exposure correction. Obviously, remember the photo was underexposed. So I had to overexpose it for about 1.54 as long as nothing is clipping as you can clearly see the histogram it's just perfect the dark side is perfectly fine it's not clipping the bright area is perfectly fine it's not clipping at all in fact it's right in the middle so mid-tone is just perfect and of course i had to do a little bit of um, white balance correction so because i had this kind of red cast the uh, green cast the reason why i had green cast because you have to remember because it's surrounded by greenery so i had this green reflection all over the bird so what i had to do to combat that i went opposite direction of green which is somewhere near magenta red zone so remember this is the way that you can get rid of any kind of color cast if you want to know and I turned on auto light optimizer. Then photo style, I did standard because it's nice, crunchy and beautiful. I like it, my personal favorite. At the bottom, I reduced highlight about minus three to um, compensate from upping my brightness at the top. And color tone, I went to plus two, as you can clearly see. So plus two is also somewhat make the whole thing reddish not really red but it has this kind of negative green uh, tone which is also a great tool to get rid of any kind of color cast just to let you know now in the lens correction i turn on the digital lens optimizer clearly see that in 1.2 the digital lens optimizer recovers a lot of details and adds some micro contrast then turn on your color blur color blur blah peripheral aluminium basically that's like a vignette simple as that but my lens is 70 to 200 f4 l lens so very rarely i have vignette and you turn on the distortion correction of course now this is the important part now this is where you have to pay attention you make sure that luminance noise into zero but leave the chrominance noise to default extremely important because let the canon lens, canon software look after the color noise and let the topaz to look after everything else then you also have to get rid of or disable sharpness again because topaz denoise will look after the sharpness as well so you don't want to over sharp anything it is a very crucial step guys remember now when you export it make sure you export in tiff 16 bit 
right? But leave everything else as it is. Don't, don't worry about it. But make sure you export it in 16-bit TIFF file. Now open Topaz Denoise AI. Then drag and drop it. It's going to take some time to generate a preview. It usually takes about a few seconds. Personally, I would wait and take my time. Then immediately, you see the automatic AI clear mode. It gives you a default result. To me, the blur area with the automatic mode doesn't look very good to me. It has this all kind of weirdness into it. Yeah, there are a little bit of recovery, obviously. It looks a lot better than the previous one. But when you're paying for a specific specialized software, you want magic, period. So even in 50% zoomed out, it doesn't look that great, in my opinion. Again, this is the 100% uh, fit. It did uh, some kind of improvement. In fact, it improved uh, quite a lot, but I don't like it. So what I did, I went to the Denoise AI and then I manually added 59 to remove noise. I added 76 to add some sharpness. The recover original detail to 46 and color noise reduction to 22. And boom, did you see that? Extraordinary, so much. It's almost, almost to me, I don't know about you, but I think it looks like the photo is taken at ISO 100 in broad daylight. This is just top class. The feather looks really nice. The branch looks quite natural to me. And the blur area basically cleaned up like a magic. It's, look at the contrast side by side. Extraordinary change. I mean, it's incredible. This is where the money is going. Now, remember, if you want to edit it further in Photoshop, GIMP or Affinity Photo or even Lightroom if you have one or Silky Beast Developer Studio Pro, something like I use, then you must export in TIFF to have the maximum color and information. There is a very important step. But if you're happy with the result like I am, because I'm personally very happy with it, I'm going to export in JPEG. What I, I'm going to do actually, in this case, I'm going to bring the TIFF over to Affinity Photo to add some touch contrast, but I'm going to show you the result first. So this is our final result, combination with Canon DPP, Canon DPP and Topaz Denoise AI. So much improvement. This is the previous photo and that's the after. See that? I'm going to show you again before and after. Can you believe that? That is, this photo was taken in ISO 6400 underexposed to this. Crazy, right? I'm going to zoom in quite a bit to show you the, give you a little bit of tour. I think I have another photo cropped in already, but I'm going to show you right here anyway. So this is the eye. I don't know if it's 100%. I think it's too much zoomed in. Now it's fine. Look at the eye, especially the eye. It's tack sharp. Remember your subject, if it's an animal or a person, eye is the key. And as long as the eyes is sharp, you are safe. So in this case, I'm safe. However, what I did in Affinity Photo, I added a touch curve S curve to add some contrast. So I'm going to show you before and after. So this is before Affinity Photo and this is after Affinity Photo where only, only thing I did, I added a touch contrast with curve, not with the contrast slider, with curve. Nothing too much, but the result is magnificent and glorious. I'm going to show you a little bit more. Check this one out. How much improvement that black looks darker and the white looks brighter without clipping too much because you can see the details in the feather. My goodness, I'm so happy with this. So this is side by side. From far left, the original, then we had done our first step in Canon DPP. This is our Canon DPP result without sharpening and noise reduction. Then we did our modification in Topaz Denoise AI. And this is our final result combination with the touch curve. You can actually do the same thing. I really didn't need it, that part to do in Affinity Photo. I could actually do that in Silky Pix Developer Studio Pro. I could do that in Free GIMP. Or even if you have Lightroom, you can actually do the same thing in Lightroom as well. So all, that's why I told you that Affinity Photo is optional here. We can do the similar adjustment in somewhere else.
This is 100% zoom to the eye. Look at the details. In Topaz, you already did your job so much that only thing is left to do is to add some contrast. What I did in Affinity Photo, again, I repeatedly saying that, that Affinity Photo is not important. You can do the same thing in Silky Pixel Pro Studio Pro or Lightroom or Photoshop or GIMP. Look at the blur area. Only thing I can is left to say is wow. I mean, if you think otherwise, please comment in the comment section below so that I know exactly if there is anything wrong with it because personally, I'm really impressed. And this is the feather. So much detail recovery, even after a little bit of S curve, it got even better. And as I said, wow. So I hope you like this uh, video. I hope you learned something. If you did, please do like and subscribe and please feel free to comment in the comment section below. I'd like to hear from you. And most importantly, look after yourself. Bye-bye.